Hello everybody. Today our group is going to talk about what we have learned um, about Lord Cecil, Robert Cecil, or third um, Marcus of Salisbury, also known as Lord Salisbury, after taking on the title after his elder brother's ultimate death. Uh, let's see. Born in 1813, he was the fifth of six children and is often described as being thin, tall, and shy. To most individuals of, of his family, he was aloof and courteous. He was a deeply religious person and kept that faith his entire life. His biographies, it is stated that his wife had often feared of his mental state. He was severely depressed at times and was given to, to uh, sleepwalking. The couple married in 1957 and had eight children. While his income was modest, he had family and looked and looked to journalism to sublime to supplement his his refined political ideas. His beliefs uh, his beliefs. Um, Uh, that the establishment institutions and arrangements should further the stability, security, and prosperity for the for the society. It serves for the for the greatest happiness for the greatest number. As as a conservative politician, his group helped to define political in the Victorian era, as well as contain his long political career, which ranged from foreign office to prime minister. Uh, as a staunch supporter of the Confederates, of the, of the Confederacy, he saw the conflict as the hatred between two parties. It is, is too deadly for reconciliation and warlike powers. Um, is too is too nearly balanced for for parliament conquest. The southern states must from an independent nation. The north is fighting for the sentiment cause. No victory of the higher civilization. It is a struggle for empire. Needless to say, Lord Salisbury thought the north should be defeated. As for his um, beliefs in of his agenda, Lord Salisbury seemed to think democracy an unfit form of government because it only operated with the with the faith of integrity when things were going well. It replied too heavily on the good nature of man. No man was free from evil possessions or blind selfishness. The government is a defensive and remedial institution. It is its function is to maintain order and avert internal conflict and it and it will only succeed when it does so in the minds of Lord Salisbury. Was um, proof that the American experience was a failure. Um, the South Sea central government, as, tyrann as tyrannical, and their willingness to abolish slavery of the South for tough determination, the North viewed the South's instance on preserving slavery as as a as a stain to America's democratic reputation, but the, the succeeding from the Union was the fracture of the America's power of America's power. Both that moment, but the future were were they were were they to acquiesce. Lord Salisbury's view were in line with the North's inter interpretation of the North. Lincoln's war was no 
was in no um different from from the ones waged by the by the Tsar which Poland whose national rising was drenching in blood. The methods by which Lincoln waged his imper his imperialist war in prison without trial, arbitrary power of conscription, a a, a system of passport, unlimited Discretion and declared martial law were just some uh, were justified by Democrats on the worthless grounds that that the authority for for them came from the ballot box because Lincoln believed in in the power of democracy for the states and that democracy itself had to be had to be salvaged. Unlike what most Europeans felt in the in Europe, which was completely opposite of America in the mid to late nineteenth century, what I find more interesting is is that in this past few decades, his criticism of democracy are far more apparent than than during the Civil War era. While I do not understand the Civil War better after studying his viewpoint, I am seeing. The validating the validity of his arguments considering our political landscape today.